on the schools to teach in terms of curriculum, or will they be making up their curriculum? Will they be adhering to the kind of state curriculum? You know, one of the things we've been doing is working for common core curriculum so that if a child is going to Mississippi and they're going to Massachusetts, ultimately a child is going to be able to, to transfer home like that. Okay. Yes, ma'am. That, that will be also included as the optimizer piece to be able to insert those type of, of benchmarks to say that we need to see both Correct me if I'm wrong, but the common core is not out yet. No. Okay. Okay. So it's best practice that. Well, I'm just trying to make sure that we're talking about the same thing. So, so the short answer is yes. And then, but the authorizers will have that authority, and they will be having they would have an executive mm -hmm. office that will be more more detail. And another question I have is. Mm -hmm. Is there any negotiation in your mind uh, for excluding successful school districts from this district? Representative Wigton, um, that, that's, a, that's a really great question. Let me just go back. I believe I sat here two years ago and I watched Dr. Bounds with the equation. And do you know that we actually sat here in this room and changed the accountability rating of the state? And we basically, he was, he was quoted as saying we employed him. And, and I, I was stunned to hear it. And that is to me seeming <coughs> that we have no other options. We have, we're done. Because now we're employing numbers. And that's where this accountability, you know, we start school to fail in school, all of those numbers began to change with the inflation of numbers. And we actually passed it. All right? Now, so in, in my opinion, those that rating has no value to it. Absolutely no. And they may for the system have value. But when we begin to alter those numbers like how we did, I believe that was two years ago, in legislation, it passed. I thought that was very disturbing and that saying that our children really were gonna take a look at the numbers a little bit and make us look a little better in those two districts. And I think that's unfair. Okay, I, I guess I'm remembering a little differently. Uh, in 2009, through passing legislation, actually, I thought it was harder um, than, than making it easier. But it's all in your perception. I, know, I, 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 I will I'll concede that it's really hard to remember two different things. Okay, and then the, the last kind of broad question I have is do you have a fiscal note on this? Do you know? I mean, are we going to pay the people that are the five board members? And are we going to? Them to kind of them. That percentage is broken out. Okay. Uh, we do have a note on the original bill of 888, and, and it says it's, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's, it's no new money, but we have the note. Okay, it's no new money, but that's money that will be taken out of the construction. No, 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 no. It's, it's coming from the corner. It's coming from the existing formula. And, and guess what? Listen, see, I, I guess, Mr. Chairman, I, I can't play with this particular section because either you're on this side or this side on this particular but, but point. I'm not trying to be I'm, Yeah. Money following the child. It's, it's very simple. So there's no new money. If you believe that that dollar amount is for that child, and there's no new money. But a percentage of that, which is 3%, is pulled out of the equation for the staffing and the structure of what it takes to make this all come together. Right. And what percentage of that money then is pulled out and given to, and so so what I'm talking about is, <coughs> I think you're telling me is that the 3% is about what would go to the Department of Ed out of this child's money. Is that correct? I would say that would be yes. Okay, just, those are just broad questions. Thank you. I appreciate it. Again, I'd exactly looking for the numbers. On it. What, if, and I'm going to ask the committee if it would indulge to this understanding of what the committee is going to decide today whether or not to move this piece of legislation forward. Uh, you can believe me that what moves from this committee, should the committee decide to move it forward, will not be the final version of the bill. All, all of us understand the process. And it can be a very complicated issue. 
and I personally, as the chairman of this committee, do not want it to leave here, go immediately to the floor, pass exactly as it is, and go straight to the governor as it is. I want, I want the, the House and Senate to have the ability to talk about it and talk about it throughout the process. And I think the latest day that we can actually have to come forward with a final conference report is somewhere late in April. So we have a long way. You know, the decision that this committee is going to make today is whether you want to move this process along to the next step and, and keep working with the bill and, and actually make it. Uh, and I know every one of us in here in this room, we can we can find one good reason, one line in this mission to be a legislator to vote against. And uh, I will submit to you as the chairman of this committee that I am going to be working with the committee after the process, whether you voted up or down, uh, to, to move the legislation along. I hope that you will, uh, will go with me and carry this legislation on to the floor, and let's see if we can uh, make this piece of legislation what we can all be very proud of when we leave here, Mark, uh, May the 1st. And uh, there were a couple more people that had questions. Uh, I believe that the gentlelady from Adam Lincoln had a question. Ms. Curry. Thank you. And this is for my understanding. Um, at some point, and this may not be true, you know, in all of our conversations, it was said that a school that is up and going now could say, we have to be a charter school. And it could go through what it takes to become a charter school. Is that correct? Then uh, he said something about but that we would only take 25% of the students. So, I'm not taking, um, I just want to make sure that. Yes, it's not 25%. It's that it can't deviate any more than 25%. Okay. 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 At risk. Right, that's okay. You can't, okay. can't deviate okay. from that, that equation. And that, and that that's right. I, okay. I just wanted to be sure. And uh, on the athletic association, I guess maybe this is because I'm a woman and uh, I don't care about football and things like that. I just, um, I'm, I'm wondering why we would even, you know, I thought that being kind of associated with the uh, athletic association was going to be that the charter school student could go to the public school and that they would decide what fee to charge that student for them to go to the public school and be a part of their athletic curriculum. You're absolutely okay, so we're not going to have a, because they were saying, well, you know, they're going to steal our uh, <coughs> best player. I'm, I'm, I, this is an important question. I, we're not going to have football at the charter school. Right, there you go. And that's why I gave that example of the other manner of the charter school receiving the football quarterback. Okay, just check. Okay, uh, we you like to go ahead and get it. Thank you. Um, you know, our state of the bank. Okay. Mr. Chairman, thank you. First off, let me just preface this by saying. First off, let me just preface this by saying I commend everybody for being here. Anybody that says Mississippi doesn't care about education needs to be in this room. They need, need to be down in 113 earlier today. So I commend everybody for being here. And Mr. Chairman, I commend you and, and Representative Espy on this <coughs> hard work that you put forward to it. I do have a couple of questions, though, if, if I may. First off, explain to me, gentlemen, about... You, you asked a question a while ago about, or answered a question about the certification of the teachers. And I have, I have an issue of not having a, a baseline qualification for the teachers to teach them. But I don't understand why you can't certify, why, why there couldn't be some type of compromise for certi certification of teachers. And I would say that I'm just when you give this authority, and I gave the example about a um, person that has a PhD, they don't have that same. But if they want to, you know, 
attend a, a charter school, we should be able to use that asset immediately. But at the same time, there's nothing in the data that shows that having that certification raises the quality. And there's, there's no information out there that says that. And I guess I'm, I'm trying to answer the question appropriately, but that's the best that I can, I can give you on the data. And, but, and when we finish today, I can maybe give you, you know, that information to show. But doesn't that cut both ways? If you don't have certification, you're going to have somebody in there who, who may not be qualified to teach. We have this issue, and God bless them for what they do with some of the emergency certification teachers. And we have these people complaining about that, about they're not qualified to be there, but, but they're there, they're in the system. My wife's a teacher, her family's a teacher, and they're going to be getting this benefit from our curve. They're going to be getting benefit from the state hospital, or from the state health, all that issue. But yet they don't have to. They don't have to be a certified and have to be qualified as our public school teacher. That's, that's the issue. Can there not be some type of it's like like the Senate bill was at fifty percent? That way, if you got fifty percent, you've got your certified teachers there. You still got the avenue for you of what you're saying, bringing in a PhD, bringing in that doctor. I understand your concern. So let me just take it one at a time. Just to the, um, the aspect of that is that if you were to, to look at the research nationally on charter schools, the retirement system honors the charter school structure, and this is why. There are new people coming into the system, and we, we need them. And then typically they're younger, and they'll be paying into the system. So it, it would have the opposite of what you're describing there to that effect. And then secondly, you know, on the, um, the measure of, of 50%, I can't tell you either, what, either way of what I just, you know, just described to you. So I understand your opinion and your, your thoughts on it. That's about as best I can do. Other questions I have, we, if you'll, and it's 270, it's on line 276 of, of the bill I got, it's in section nine, with what you're talking about. Talking about the public charter school board and how they were consistent, what they're consistent of five members, three from the governor, one from the lieutenant governor, one from the speaker of the house, I believe. And then in, in the next paragraph, it talks about what they're supposed to accomplish, their ability, their experience, and stuff like that. But what I have trouble with as well is there's really not a mandate for them to be in education. There's not a mandate for them to, to have that qualification. It says that they shall collectively possess. I don't want to sound too much like an attorney, but what does possess mean? What does collectively mean? Uh, I'm telling you, would, there be, would you be open to some type of amendment or something placing a, a structure, a guideline for the appointment of those members of the board to have some type of education background? You're making this another great point. But the only thing that I can say to you, I, I would love to leave it as open as possible. And the reason why, because you can always go back and get those type of people, you know, through the authorizing process. And traditionally, it has been of the opinion like Secretary Duncan on the federal level, um, he didn't possess any of those those um, attributes or things and criteria that would be need to make a perfect educator. But um, he didn't possess those things. And he's the, um, the secretary right now. So, you know, I would, I would encourage business people to come to the table. Well, I, I, you know? I, and with all due respect, I understand that. But, <clears throat> and maybe I'm old fashioned, I don't know. But I just don't think you can run a school, you can run a school district or a school board like you can a business. I don't think that's the mindset we should have. Our mindset should be about educating those, t those children and putting educators and people who have that experience in those positions. The best way that I can attempt to describe again is that I believe that it should stay as open as possible. Because through that process, you're going to get the very best. And I believe if you bring those type of people to the table, I think you may have a more robust scenario and try innovative techniques. One other question, and this is just one other question. 
And this is just something that I'm, and I've been here two months, so I'm trying to figure out everything. And just now figured out where the bathrooms were, so that's good. Uh, okay. It, it talks about no, no public, no private school can become a public school. Undoubtedly, there will be some children, there will be some of these kids going from private school to the charter schools. Will that or how will that affect or dilute any of the MAP appropriation? We had this discussion on yesterday. And um, you can't stop the child. No. You, you just simply can't stop the coming from you know, coming into the public school structure. Um, there's no data that we can produce to give you that number. We, we can't say that, um, you know, an academy school, they may say, hey, listen, let's just shut down. Let's send all of our kids to that charter school. I can't give you that number. And I don't think the Department of Education can give you that number. But I can give you an example. <laughs> My children were in private school. Now they're in public school. So, I mean, you know, just as easy. And I think that equation came out to be almost 12000 something dollars that were just dropped into the system. So we can't come up with an equation that will satisfy that answer, that, that question that you just asked. That, that's not enough. But it is a possibility, and that is something that we it's, it's may very, face down the road. It's very possible that open up a charter school and, and the, the academy school shuts down. They send everyone. It's very possible that everyone would, um, in the public school structure in a certain area would produce a new private school, and they would all leave the private school structure. So I can't, I can't give you an answer. And gentlemen, let me make something perfectly clear. I am not opposed to charter school. I believe that this has the possibility of working wonders in Mississippi, but it also has the possibility of being a Pandora's box. And we have to be very careful about what we do. And that's just the only reason. I've, I've got a lot of concerns with this particular bill. Um, but for the most part, I do commend everybody on the work. And that's why those failures of the other states we've watched them carefully. We, we attempted to put all of those issues into this bill. So we will not fail our children in Mississippi. Okay, have some more people mm -hmm. uh, seeking to be recognized for questions. It's running late here. We're going to be after the after the fact time. Seek to be recognized for the community. This is who I have on my list. Uh, Toby Barker, Rick Barker, Jeff 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 to be recognized for a point. Yes. <laughs> okay, uh, okay uh, Representative Park. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, gentlemen from Oklahoma, uh, my, my line of question is going to start with the, uh, the definition of after student. Um, basically, you said it includes, but it's not limited to students that are economically disadvantaged. Uh, I guess we're going to use students to kind of determine that. Uh, students with special ed needs, students that are limited to human proficiency, students who have risk of dropping out, students who may not be able to stand in fact in proficiency. How are you going to ensure that you get a balance of those? Because those are, those are very different categories than at risk. How, how do you ensure that there's going to be a, a, a fair sampling of all those? I'm not sure of the section, but I know I read it. Um, it clearly states that it must follow the local school district's existing structure of the schools that are, that are in the normal traditional public school system. So, I'll give you an example, okay? 90% of the Hadley's local school district is, is on free But not all those kids are at risk. I mean, all the categories. No, but, but not all of them are performing poorly on academics. And so how do you, in your, in your selection process, how is this going to make sure that you get a balance of those? Because free and reduce is, is, is very ominous. So, so how do you make sure you're getting special ed and the low academic performing and, and the limited English proficiency? How are you going to balance that? Well, I would say in that district, it would, it would be very difficult because Let's just say there's a flood of children that come to the charter. You know, there's just an out flood, and there's a lottery process that pulls the trigger on the lottery. 
then you're going to have to go with that modern structure according to this. Do you think that the ones who might go, again, I'm just, you know, I hope to work on it. I agree with that. Do you not think that we may have a situation where people whose parents are very involved already kind of run to the charter school and, and the ones who are behind are typically the ones that whose parents are involved who typically are the ones who are not performing academically? Well, I would differ with that opinion because let's just say if you're in a traditional public school and, and let's say you're an A student, you're not looking to go anywhere. It's the ones that have the problem that are looking for the help. So those are the ones who actually seek out the public charter school. I, I, I think that's a very idealistic way to see it. I hope we're working, working on that. Yeah. 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 And, and why the 25% deviation? Um, why is it set that high? Which is a high school. I think it's a high school. We can work on that. Yes. All right. Um, you mentioned Helena, Arkansas, and, and no one's going to deny that, that that's a great school. So tell me, when did Arkansas pass a very large school law? I can't give you the exact date, but I know it had to be in the late, late night. So we're over 10 years. Yeah, we, we're 10 years in. And how many charges do you have in Arkansas? I can't give you. I don't want to, I don't want to call the number because I don't have it before me. But, but I'm aware, I'm aware of two, and the, the best model um, would be the GIP charter school in Osceola, Osceola, Arkansas, and West Alabama. I believe it's seven, okay. seven total. Seven in the state. Yes. So just by passing this legislation, we're not going to see this flood of, of charter schools in the area. I mean, that's that's right. Right. Okay. All right. Okay, one more question on the virtual school because I know we capped it at two percent of the funds. Um, you go to virtual schools. Does that, does that include the, the MAP? Um, what, what's, what's the 2% of the funding that we're talking about? Yeah, the local source. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Just chairman, thank you. And, and when you I'm, when I have, I'm sorry, I, I was misinformed. It is 17, not 7. But still, there hasn't been a flood. Yeah, they had been. Mr. Chairman, let me get the further time. Let's get on this. All right. Uh, delay up there. Just a statement, if you wouldn't mind indulging me. Um, to the committee, I would like to let you know I've uh, been here in this legislature for 20 years and I've been the education committee with high hopes of uh, seeing the improvement in the scores that our children have in Mississippi. I have seen flatline instead. I know there's been lots of attempts, lots of attempts to change the uh, achievement gap, the achievement of our children. I have seen the standards lowered many times to make us think we're doing better. It has been <coughs> appalling to me that we don't want to take a chance that we have right now to be able to change the whole structure. We will not have a flood. There's no doubt that there won't be very many charter schools, but the option, we have an obligation to see to it that our parents have some sort of way to change some of this. Do you realize that successful schools don't mean successful? That is the midpoint. There are star schools and there are high performance schools that are above successful. And our successful districts, and this is based on fact, this is not just rhetoric and it's not emotion speaking, although I feel very emotional about it, I'll have to admit. Fewer than half of the successful districts have met their growth projections in reading and language arts. What does a child do without knowing how to read or to do basic math? How can they be socially promoted year after year? Because they get to a point where they can't read and the teachers don't want to have them stay in their classes. And so they socially promote them so that we can look better at our graduation rate. But, and yet, we have a high dropout rate because these kids can't keep up and they don't want to be in the school and look stupid. There is a chance here that we can 
get this charter school bill passed and have an option for parents who are desperate, and there are people who are in the low income bracket who are desperate for their children to have a chance to succeed and do better. And I think this is our chance, and I certainly hope that we can get behind this effort that the gentleman has pushed forward and all this work that's been done. There's actually three more people that I'm going to recognize for questions. Hey, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and thank you for the committee for the, the hard work that you've done on this bill. Uh, my question is, what effect will these charter schools have on the local school districts that have uh, borrowed money maybe against MAEP? Are they, are they borrowed money through uh, bond, bond issues? How will, how will charter schools affect those? Well, what I, you know, yesterday we talked about uh, extending uh, money through MAEP for, for building purposes. And you gave us how many millions of dollars that school districts have borrowed against MAEP funds. And my question is, of all this money that's been borrowed for school, dis for school <coughs> districts to build new schools with, how is building charter schools, how is it going to affect those school districts? I keep hearing school districts say they're low on funds, and, and other people say, well, they got plenty of money, let's take that money from them and, and use it later on. How will charter schools affect the, those schools? Or maybe even schools that have, the counties that's gone out and borrowed money on bond issues to, to be paid back. What effect will that have on those schools? Representative, um, the actual brick and mortar structure that you had alluded to, and I think you could just back me up on this public tax the actual brick and mortar of charters actually partnered with nonprofits. Let's just say a big interest that's out there now is the Walton Corporation, um, who has allotted a certain amount of dollars, and they come in and they actually help you with your brick and mortar. So that is no no, no additional tax dollars will be used to start a charter school at all. But, but, Mr. Chairman, you said that the, the local MAEP money was going to follow the child. If it follows the child, what's going to happen to the school district that's already borrowed money against those MAEP funds? Let me, let me try to answer the question, Mr. Rusty. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to First of all, we spoke, let's take the MAEP pledge dollars aside, but we also spoke to bonded and indebtedness money. Right? Uh, just, just a typical 20 year bond that the school district has, and they're paying back with mills that they have left. Right? The, the monies that will follow, the local avenue money that will follow the child to the corner school are not exceeding debt service money. The school district will continue to receive debt service money to pay the bond. Right? Now, on the MAEP piece, uh, when the MAEP was, was enacted in 1997, the school districts had a, had a window where they could pledge MAEP dollars. We had, to, we had school districts that pledged uh, up to $160 per child uh, for up to 20 years. Uh, those school districts were using MAEP dollars to pay those bonds off, uh, you know, the, the effect would be that if the school district loses MAEP money or a child going to a charter school, then they're going to have to deal with, with that loss of funds. I mean, they, they're still going to have to pay that, they're still going to have that debt service payment that they're going to have to make uh, off the MAEP pledge dollar. But they won't have the money from that student, the money to go with that student, is that correct? That's correct. Uh, what about the pay scale for, for teachers on charter schools? Is there a pay scale that's set up? They can they can impact, and, and this is this is what I would say is the great part. I mean, this is like the part where they shine. All of those central offices that you see around the state, 
And if you walk through those offices and you see those dollar amounts, you know, for those um, you know, administrators, faculty, and da da da, just going down the list. But the great part about it, charter dollars actually goes to the actual principal, and money directly goes to the teachers. Period. That's what the bulk of the money goes. So you eliminate all of that central office, and, and in fact, in my opinion, they are better steward of taxpayers' dollars than the consistent structure that we're under right now. One last question, Mr. Chairman. Does, the, does our local school...